Today we're going to take a look at the 2021 Honda Rebel 1100, or as some countries call it, the CMX 1100. We'll talk about where this 1100cc cruiser fits in Honda's current motorcycle lineup, and we'll go over some of its specs and features. Plus, we'll start it up so you guys can hear what it sounds like, and a lot more. But first, if you guys find any info in this video helpful, please take a second and hit the like button. Liking the video and commenting below really helps with growing this channel through YouTube's algorithm, and I really appreciate the help, guys. Now, where does the Rebel 1100 fit in the Honda's current cruiser lineup? We'll start with the Rebel 300 that comes in at $45.99, and then you have the Rebel 500 at $62.99. Then we jump over to models that Honda didn't release a 2021 model year for, and that's the Shadow Aero 750 at $76.99, in the Shadow Phantom 750 at $78.99, and that's followed up by the largest engine of the bunch, but not the highest horsepower, the Fury 1300. The Rebel 1100 is not only the only cruiser from Honda to come standard with ABS, it is the only cruiser to have an optional DCT automatic transmission, and that's the version that we're looking at today, but we'll be covering both models in this video. If you want to go with a manual six-speed transmission, its price tag comes in at $92.99, and then if you want the automatic DCT, it'll bump you up to $99.99. I want to take a quick second and say thank you to Southern Honda Power Sports for opening their doors to me and allowing me to come pick through their inventory for these videos. They are a massive Honda Power Sports dealer here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, with tons of inventory from new Hondas to used Harleys and everything in between that they sell to people from all over the USA. So check out the link in the description below and head over to their website to see if they can save you some money on your next toy. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump into a little more info on the Rebel 1100. Aside from choosing which option you want on the transmission side of things, your only other option comes down to color choices. Now sometimes Honda will limit you on colors based on the options you choose, but thankfully that's not the case here. You have metallic black or Bordeaux Red Metallic to choose from, whether you get an automatic or a manual. And now let's dive into the chassis and suspension. The Rebel 1100 has a 59.8 inch wheelbase and a 30 degree fork angle, giving it the cruiser style that really hides how competent this bike is in the twisties. Thanks to the caster angle at 28 degrees and the trail length at 4.3 inches, helping achieve both straight line stability and an overall neutral handling feel. Tie that in with the 27.5 inch seat height, the neutral position of the foot pegs and controls, plus a 35 degree bank angle, and 4.7 inches of ground clearance with a curb weight of only 487 pounds, and this isn't your normal cruiser. The DCT model does add a few pounds to the curb weight though, bringing you up to 509 pounds, which is still extremely light for a cruiser, and thanks to the way it's balanced, it doesn't feel like it weighs 500 pounds. Now when it comes to the suspension side of things, you have a blacked out 43 millimeter conventional telescopic fork that is coated with dark navy titanium oxide, while the two part sliders are wrought in die cast aluminum. They have a cartridge type damper and 5.5 inches of wheel travel, and you can adjust the preload. Out back, you have dual Showa shocks with 12.5 millimeter shafts, and pressurized piggyback reservoirs with 3.7 inches of wheel travel. And just like in the front, you can adjust the preload as well. Now when it comes to stopping this bike, you have a single monoblock, four piston radio mounted brake caliper that's clamping down on a floating 330 millimeter rotor. With a single piston caliper on the rear and a 256 millimeter rotor with ABS coming standard on the Rebel 1100. It also has cast aluminum wheels, 18 inches up front with a 130-70 tire, and a 16-inch wheel in the back with a 180-65 tire wrapped around it. And now we'll jump into the engine and drivetrain. The Rebel 1100 has a 1,084cc single overhead cam 8-valve parallel twin cylinder engine that is based off of the Africa Twin 1100's power plant but with a variety of key changes that have completely altered its overall feel and to cater to more of a cruiser style bike over an adventure model. It makes 86 horsepower at 7,000 RPM with 72 pound-feet of torque at 4,750 RPM. 
Now to some, that may not sound like a lot, but when you start comparing power to weight ratios, this is the fastest cruiser Honda has made in the last 20 years. It'll outrun the VTX 1800, the Valkyrie Rune, the Magna, which were Honda's highest horsepower and fastest cruisers from the last couple decades. And if you'd like more detailed information on the engine's internals, there's a link in the description below where I go more in depth on the engine and its changes from the Africa Twin and more over at HondaProKevin.com. Now, when it comes to the transmission, you have two options. You have Honda's six-speed manual transmission, or you can opt for the six-speed automatic dual-clutch transmission. If you opt for the automatic DCT, you can choose to control it manually and change gears by clicking the plus and minus buttons on the left handlebar, or flip it over to automatic mode and let the computer take care of all gear changes. Now thankfully, even when riding in automatic mode, you can force manual gear shifts by tapping the shift buttons, and it'll return back to automatic shifting after a few seconds. And just like the engine, I could go on for about 20 minutes on the transmission alone, but most of you don't want to hear that, so I'm going to throw another shameless plug to the blog where I go into more detailed information on the transmission and its inner workings. The link is below for those of you that may want to learn more about that. And next up, we'll briefly touch on some of the electronics on the Rebel. You not only have Honda's traction control, called HSTC for Honda Selectable Torque Control, but you also have wheelie control in there too. Plus, you have multiple riding modes too that will alter the HSTC and wheelie control settings, engine braking, and DCT shift timing to give you a different ride depending on the mode selected. Your three riding modes are Standard, Sport, and Rain. In addition to those, you also have a customizable user mode that can be set up to your own preferences. Plus, we can't forget that it also has cruise control, which is a big thing to a lot of riders, and thankfully, it's starting to become more of a standard feature from Honda. Helping you cycle through all these modes and settings is your 4.7-inch diameter screen with an LCD display. And for lighting, you have a 6.9-inch LED headlight with 2.1-inch LED turn signals to match the overall styling. And next up, how about accessories? Thankfully, Honda isn't treating this bike like a red-headed stepchild like they do with some models, and they've actually created a few OEM accessories for the Rebel 1100. You've got different fenders, headlight cowls, luggage racks, saddlebags, windshield fairing, rider and passenger seats, plus more. And speaking of passenger seats, I'd love to ask Honda why they opted to bring ours over here without it. I'm not hating on the fact that they did it because you have the option to add it if you'd like, but I just like to hear the reasoning behind it. Some of the decisions and why they make them have always interested me. But now, let's start it up and then we'll come back for a few more things. And that's the 2021 Honda Rebel 1100. Honda's first real step back into their cruiser game in quite a while, and I think they hit it out of the park. Is it perfect? No. Could they make it better? Oh yeah. However, for the money, I think you'll have a difficult time finding a cruiser that offers what this bike does, and for less than 10,000 bucks. Plus, you have an optional automatic transmission. How many other manufacturers can say that? But this is a conversation, guys. I love hearing your thoughts and opinions. What do you think about the Rebel 1100 and the direction Honda went with it? What would you like to see Honda change in the future? And 
that's a wrap for this one, guys. Thanks again for all the support lately. I really can't say how much I appreciate it. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next one.